Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 65. 65! Do we know of any 65s? I can't. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I don't know. Eric Carlson! (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, so this episode we're going to be talking about, obviously, the uh, week in review. Uh, We'll take a look at the week ahead, and we're also going to look at this last six-game winning streak stats. Yeah. And uh, then we'll do our little fantasy hockey and EASHL updates. Very good. Ready to start the show? Ready. Well, uh, I have to say, the ladies tell me I look like uh, Ned Flanders, which I just realized is not a compliment. It's not good. <laughs> Oakley dookley. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, no, um, we're, we're going to start off the same way that we start off every episode. You, you have you to anymore. stop laughing now because, okay, we're going to start off every uh, episode in November the same way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let you guys know why we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this to raise awareness, of course, the month of November. Uh, we're raising awareness for um, men's health issues like uh, prostate cancer as well as mental health issues, which, by the way, if you haven't seen episode 63, uh, definitely a good watch. I had Jamie Baker on the show, and he had a lot of stuff to say about uh, mental health and whatnot and ways that uh, you can help yourself you can help mm-hmm. others so if you're struggling or you know someone who is uh, it's a great resource episode number 63 it's not about the views it's about the information that's there jamie brings a lot of really good knowledge and experience so yeah. um, mo team you want to go ahead we and do plug that we'll put the link down here okay. uh is it mo team.com or dot co sorry slash uh, the dash fin dash factor mm-hmm. that'll take you to our team page me paul and super key grip joe mm-hmm. are growing these disgusting mustaches mustaches i can't even mustaches say yeah wow. like sausages wow <laughs> uh we're growing these things out for the entire month of of november uh, for your pleasure so please help us uh, get to our goals and donate some money today and for, uh, again, anyone who uh, may be struggling, I want to go ahead and put that suicide prevention uh, lifeline uh, up on the board or on the screen again. Uh, it's 1-800-273-8255. So if you are struggling, please go ahead and give them a call. They will be able to help you out. Okay, so we're going to talk some sharks here. A week mm-hmm. in review. Uh, this week, just about as good as the last week. Three up, three down, six points. Uh, hard to argue with that, really. So, yep. I think uh, in the end of last week's when we talked about the looking ahead, mm-hmm. we were happy to have. Obviously, we're happy to have six points, and if it's possible, six points. But you said that you'd be a little bit disappointed if we didn't, and I said I'd be okay with five of six, which could mm. have happened if they lost the shootout. So, obviously, we're happy. That's right. It's great. It's fantastic. I forgot that you said that you'd be happy with five. And I, I said s- no. I don't want five. I want six. You're right. They heard me. They did. Got in the shootout. They did. Very good. Okay, so the first game was against Edmonton. Uh, that game, it was, uh, you know, they, they played with the lead pretty much the whole game, right? So Yeah. Uh, I th- Edmonton is the top team right now mm-hmm. in the division, at least in the Pacific. So uh, everyone's trying to gonna be gunning for him in a way. Uh, the Sharks really shut down that dry sidle McDavid line. Mm-hmm. They did get on the board, but it was at that point the game was kind of out of hand, so it didn't really matter. Um, and I, I thought the Sharks played really well for most of the game. Uh, they did kind of settle in at the end and, and let them, not that they let them back in the game, but they, they made some mental mistakes and, and gave right. up some goals. Now, you know, you're not going to shut them out. It's, it's a little bit too much. When you're, but you have four goal leads for a couple times in the game. You should be winning the game, which mm-hmm. they did. So kudos to them for being able to shut them down and not letting them crawl back into the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we have, uh, actually, we have a nice clip here from Mark Edward Vlasic. He was asked about um, them getting the winning, I guess, results, right? How, how do you go about getting those winning results? And uh, this is what Mark Edward Vlasic had to say. The results come with uh, us uh, playing our system. Good breakouts, good forecheck, not turn the puck over. And if you do that on most nights, you'll win. Uh, it's interesting that the hurdle line was up against that McDavid and Drysaddle line, and not the Couture line. Yeah. Um, but kudos to Hurdle, man. They he is really becoming a superstar in this league. Uh, kind of getting to that next level. Uh, not just points, but almost like two-way center. Like he's really yeah. becoming a really good shutdown guy who can score goals. Like that's a big deal uh, in the NHL. So good on Hurdle on and his line to shut them shut them down for most of the game I'd say almost the whole game but yeah. most of the game no and, and I thought that was interesting too we, we had talked about that during the live and I was saying like, yeah it's kind of uh, 
Kind of interesting that Hurdle was the guy there. Actually, it might not have been turned in the live, but re regardless, it was interesting that it wasn't Couture's line um, because, again, Couture more known for his uh, defensive two-way play, and especially against a guy like Connor McDavid, you like have your best uh, defensive guys up against that. Uh, but Hurdle doing the job, shutting mm -hmm. it down. Maybe not just Hurdle, obviously, you know, his line. Um, but I was, it was nice to see Marco Vlasic commenting on not just how they shut it down, but, you know, and you said it too when we were talking about this. Mm -hmm. You never ask a player about himself. He's always going to talk nah. about everybody else, yeah. right? So it was nice to see. You know, he gives kudos to, to the team, uh, to the four group. That yeah. goes to what we always talk about, team defense, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what Vlasic is talking about there is they got a lot of help from the forwards. It wasn't just one person shutting them down right. as in Vlasic or one or someone else it's a team effort mm -hmm. and when the forwards help out like hurdles line did you could really see how the sharks can be dominant and shut down another team absolutely and in talking about team efforts uh the anaheim game they started from behind right mm -hmm. uh they stuck with the system though so um, that was a good group team effort no one trying to get outside of the system and do something different um, they just stuck with it and eventually they come out with the win in that game yeah, you can see the players are kind of trusting the system, if yeah. you will, uh, kind of going, buying in, which is a lot of the terms that mm -hmm. people use. Um, so it, it's working, and the Sharks are a very good team. Uh, we saw them stumble out the gates. Everyone was like, oh, blow up the team. It's, they're <laughs> done. Like, their window's closed. Like, just get rid of everybody. And, you know, we kind of stuck around. We're like, nah, yeah. just, just wait. Because right now... Edmonton, leading the division, is playing at their potential. This is the best that they're probably going to be playing at. Um, they're not going to be able to sustain that the entire season. This is going back to what I talked about last week mm -hmm. in our pretenders part. But um, uh, the Sharks are not playing to their potential. They are now, but they were not playing to their potential. Um, and we see when they are playing to their potential, which they still are. They're not perfect. They're right. not shutting out teams. They're not completely dominating every game. Um, but they are definitely trending in that direction. And imagine if the Sharks had started off the season with a 6-0 streak and then ended up where they are now. Yep. Right? And there's other teams in the league right now that are like that, like Toronto, for one, who is under a huge microscope mm -hmm. being in Toronto. So um, the Sharks are in an okay spot. I don't want to say they're in a great spot, but they are definitely uh, trending upwards and one of the hotter teams in the league right now. Yeah, especially in the last six. Right? I right. Mean, six straight. Yeah. Uh, you brought up an interesting, or was it Joe, brought up an interesting stat about uh, Chicago. The last six for Chicago, they're five and one. Yeah. They're the team that's on our heels in terms of that, that uh, point streak, if you will, right? And the only right. loss that they had was to the Sharks. And the Sharks are six and zero. Pretty interesting stuff there. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, the uh, Anaheim game. You know, again, they started from behind, uh, stuck with the system, and everything went well from there. So we don't have any quotes or anything for this one, though, do we? No, unfortunately, yeah, it was uh, all. But it was. It's good to see that the Sharks fought back because earlier in the season they were not. They were giving up the first goal. Yeah, almost yeah. in the first five minutes. We talked about this a lot, which they did in this game. They gave up the first goal in the first minute, and it was oddly enough, it was a Shimmick mistake. Um, Shimmick yeah. did not play very well in this game, but nobody can play a full 82 game season, or in his case, 70 games because he missed <laughs> so many. But right. um, you know, people are going to have off nights, and it's okay. It's not bad, and you need your teammates to come and pick up the slack, which is exactly what the Sharks were able to do. So yeah. it's good to see from an overall team standpoint when some players are not playing so well that others step up in their yeah. place. Well, and, and teams, I'm sorry, players not playing so well. The, the Detroit game, uh, the general theme around the Detroit game from the post game was that it wasn't their best effort. It was a little bit sloppy. Um, so, you know, we, we were riding the six game winning streak, but, you know, we're kind of coming down a little bit after that Detroit game. So we're uh, interested to see what happens in the games that are coming ahead. We'll go ahead and talk about those a little bit later on. But, um, you know, again, the Detroit game, a little bit sloppy, right? But, you know, at the end of the day, they pick up the W, they pick up the two points. They don't ask how, they ask how many, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you, you get the points. That's all that matters, really. So uh, Burns had kind of a weird one uh, that he wasn't <laughs> paying attention. And I can't remember who it was that, that scored the goal, but Burns was not looking in the slot area whatsoever. And he pulled over kind of did the same thing I'm trying to teach my 6 year kids not to do, which is uh, the puck's over on the left, and everybody kind of floats over and chases the puck. Well, uh, that left someone in the slot uh, wide open there, and the puck comes across, and of course, you know, it's it's basically one-on-one -on -one with nobody in between, so uh, puck goes in. Uh, a bit of a brain fart there by Brent Burns, but, you know, again, you pick up the slack yeah. all around uh, the rest of the team, and they come out with the win. Yes, it takes them to, uh, to a shootout to do it, but, you know, everybody kind of picked the slack uh, for each other. 
and uh, you know corrected mistakes that other guys are making to come out with the W. Yep, and there's a good quote here from uh, Eric Carlson after the game talking pretty much exactly that, where uh, they're going to take all the points that they can get. They found a way to win, uh, so we'll roll this right now. No, we're obviously in a better spot now than we were. Uh, you know, six to ten games to go, and uh, you know we still got a long way to go. But I think that you know we're finding ways to win games now. I don't think that you know we played well in Anaheim. I don't think we played particularly well today either for long stretches. But we found ways, and uh, you know that's what it is. And I think that we you know we have a belief in here now that we can win every game, and and you know we got to try and keep that. And then uh, you know we're gonna try and work on you know nights when we don't feel like we have it, uh, you know our best to try and clean it up a little bit and you know make it a little bit easier on ourselves but uh, you know we're going to take these two points and you know reevaluate on Monday. So it, it's interesting what Carlson said there where it's almost like the mindset of the room changed a little bit. Um, it sounds like the Sharks now feel like they can win every game um, or at least you know, they're not out of every single game. I think a couple games this season we saw earlier on they kind of gave up. I mean, mm-hmm. look at that Boston game, right? Yeah. In Boston, on the road, the end of their road trip, they were they did not want to be there. So I feel like um, the for one, they're buying into the system. It's working. They're getting wins out of it. Right. They're on a six game win streak right now. They they have full trust in the system. The lineup hasn't really changed that much, except for a few guys that were kind of injured and had to right. move some around. But um, Martin Jones looks good. He's not elite. He's not the best. But he's getting key saves and key yeah, moments. I'll saves. say it. Yeah, exactly. Key saves and key moments. And I've been tweeting it out sarcastically. I'll, I'll admit, <laughs> sarcastically. But you know what? Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Look, you know, there's a lot of times where people will just pile onto the guy. And um, I know that you guys think that, you know, I'm like the Jones apologist. I'm really not. I'm just the guy who's trying to keep the balance here, right? So uh, there's so much dogpiling on that I don't think is warranted. And uh, when you see a game like, you know, any pick a game, right? He's played so well in all these games. Um, and, you know, the we're going to jump into some of the stats uh, in, in just a bit here. But, I mean, he, he's stood on his head in, in really key moments. The, the seven save uh, in the shootout was amazing, right? Yeah. And he had, like you said last week, he had to make all seven saves. Yeah. There were no shots that went errant and went off to the side. Um, he made he was three for three in the other shootout, right? So, um Look, the guy, like you said, he probably worked a lot on the shootouts. I really think and the he breakaways, did. Yeah, in the the breakaways, season. in the offseason. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, no, I, I think the guy's put his work in, and he's looking really good. You know, as long as that defense in front of him, and like we heard Marco Dorvlasic say, as long as those forwards are helping out as well, right, it's a good team defensive effort. I think you're going to see both Aaron Dell's numbers and Martin Jones' numbers go up. And I think the nice thing about Jones is, again, He's getting some of these opportunities uh, that are a high danger against him, mm-hmm. and he's shutting it down. So, um, you know, again, not elite, but you said good. I'll say it. Great. I think he's great right now. He's he's playing great right now. Um, is he a good goalie? Yeah, but right now he's elevated his game quite a bit. So, um, you know, maybe that'll drop down a little bit in, in a week or two to come. Who knows? Uh, but as of right now, at least, I'm more than happy with Martin Jones' play. It's very interesting because we're coming up on that mark that we like to do we. We like to do Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. That Thanksgiving is coming up in, in next week. So we like to take a look at, um, like, that's one of the one of the periods that we look at <coughs> where the Sharks are in the standings. And right now they're in the thick of everything. So yeah. uh, they're looking good. They're trending upwards. They're obviously on a six-game win streak, so they're, they're doing well. Yeah. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see in another almost two weeks where they're going to end up. So I think... Uh, why I'm going to be right, they are going to be <laughs> up and get in that playoff spot, and then yeah. everyone's going to be quiet. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the stats over that six-game uh, winning streak. And uh, this little segment here will be brought to you by La Villa uh, over in Willow Glen. Uh, they are an awesome little shop. They've got the Chris combo. they got the raviolis. Uh, please go ahead, check them out, order ahead, because it's, uh, it's a busy little spot. So, yes, uh, check out La Villa. La Villa, we feed the league. Yes. Yes? Very good. Okay, so uh, coming back and looking at these stats now, um, the Sharks are, what is it, 4 for 20? On the power play? Yeah. Yes. 4 for 20 on the power play, 20%. Um, they are absolutely killing it, so they're looking really, really good on the power play. Um, and then on the I, peak... I wouldn't say killing it. I think they're killing it. I think that's average. They're getting their chances, though. They're scoring. They're not below average. Okay. I think they're average. I but think I, 20% is about average. I think the 16 out of 20 that they didn't get, I think they've had some pretty good looks. Looks are fine, but I, I want goals. I, I love that, too. <laughs> I love that, too. But you know what? I would rather have them having good chances and trending the right direction than having really poor power plays. Let's just say I'm not complaining, Okay. but I'm also not super pumped about it. Okay. That's fair like enough. Like, if it was like... Six or seven for 20, I'd be like, yeah, 
rolling right now. Would you? Get that average up a little yeah. bit more on the, on the overall picture of things, you know? Okay. Right now, I'm just like, eh. Good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Just like that? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say, I think they're killing it. Anyway, um, so yeah, no, I mean, so uh, four for 20 in the power play, good, right? So we're things that are that are, are good right now. That's over the six game win streak, yep. that's good to me. It is. And you know what else that says? That says that they're not relying on the power play. That says that the five on five play has been a lot better, They've which is improved. what we've been saying, which is what Jamie Baker said, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of the folks I think have kind of missed when they're talking about how bad Martin Jones is. And I'm using air quotes for the people on podcast. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think the five on pl five play has, uh, you know, elevated quite a a bit there and it's good to see that so uh the power play i think doing a good job now on the pk 94.7 percent whatever see, it that is is elite that's nuts that's crazy bonkers there's only one team better and that's because they've had much less chances and much less games yeah. in that same span yeah i think the only who was pittsburgh, pittsburgh had nine nine yeah penalty kills nine pks in yeah. five games or something we get a lot more practice on the pk yeah a Unfortunately, <laughs> in any case, yeah. So almost ninety-five percent uh, on the on the PK there. I think it was one for nineteen mm -hmm. uh, against. Essentially, is what that came still down to. Still so. leading the league, and still with Martin Jones in net. So I'm not understanding how uh, they're keeping the puck out if Martin Jones is just that bad. I don't get it. Key saves, key moments, guys. I'm going to make a shirt that says key saves, key moments, <laughs> along with it makes my body tingle. Anyway, um, so beyond that, we've got the also the goal differential, right? Mm -hmm. Not factoring in the shootouts because they don't. It doesn't count. Exactly. So uh, they are a plus eight in the goal differential. Now, it doesn't seem like a whole heck of a lot. And that's the interesting thing to me was that it's not a lot. Over six games where you've won every single game, the bare minimum is plus six unless you go to shootout every single time, right? Right. So the bare minimum will be a plus six. And they've barely eclipsed that. So to me, it's kind of like, oh, we're not we're not really blowing teams out. And if we look at the scores, the first three games There's, we won by a goal. They're right? scoring a lot of goals, but they're also giving up giving a up lot, a lot of goals. Yeah. yeah. So still some room to improve on the uh, defensive front, I would say. Right. Um, yeah. But you know, as long as we play a man down, I think we're okay. <laughs> I think the Sharks' defensive pairings are yeah. coming together. Obviously, Shimmick is back and. Coincidence that they are six and zero. Oh. Shimmick played six games. Right, right. I, I, and he did have a poor game against Anaheim. But again, you can't play every single game at an elite level. Mm -hmm. He's not an elite defenseman. He's a good defenseman, but not elite. So, um, I, yeah, I, they're good. They're doing well. And I think eight, for for Shimmick, I think Shimmick, what he adds isn't so much his presence. Like, a, like I was saying in live, Marco Bord Vlasic, right. He's a guy that you put out there, and just he himself is a defensive presence that helps the whole team. Shimmick isn't that guy, but he is the guy that pairs well with Burns and allows everyone else to have the pairings that they really ought to have. Right. We got Dylan playing on the third pairing right now, right? And I mean, we, that's huge. We talked about this in the live having Ferraro playing, mm -hmm. a left handed defenseman playing on right defense with Dylan. Yeah. Um, he's that much better than the other options that we have right now, right. which is Heed he and Prout. And Prout mm -hmm. That are the right handed defensemen. So it's good to see Mark, uh, Mark Mario Ferraro getting uh, some good ice time, not just you know Tim Heat minutes, minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of less than ten. Uh, so he's trusted. He looks good. Yeah. I think he skates well. I think he's kind of one of the surprise guys this season. And and I go to the practices and I see him all the time. And I have to say that the time where he was out for that short stint, he had he missed a few games. Um, he would come out on the rink and he would do the practice with everybody else. And then after everybody leaves, he's still out there just working over and over and over again. He's doing these drills just over and over and over. And the guy's bent over, hunched over, huffing and puffing and breathing really hard. And he gets back up and says, okay, let's do it again. And then he goes. And I, I mean, I, I've talked last season about Joe Thornton and his work ethic and how hard he chugs out there on the ice every single time. And it's it's at that level. Like mm -hmm. Ferraro is out there really, really pushing it every single time. He's pushing himself. And that's the kind of thing that you want to see out of this guy. You know, uh, the younger players really pushing themselves, especially when they've gotten that, that taste of NHL action mm -hmm. and they're staying in the lineup, right? And they're continuing to push each themselves. It's not like I'm there. Cool, I'm in the NHL. I'm solid now, right? No, he's pushing himself real, real hard. So um, my hat's off to Mario Ferraro. I mean, that guy is just killing it right now and I'm, I'm really happy for him. Yep, so... Anyway, you want to talk about some stats uh, over those six games. There are a bunch of players that are point per game or better. Um, you want to just kick it off? Sure. Fire away. And so six games, Logan Couture, 11 points. Beauty. Uh, that Tomas Hurdle, mm -hmm. nine points. Mm -hmm. Timo Meyer, nine points. 
Uh, Vander Kane and Eric Carlson, six points. They are at least a point per game players. Yeah. This is what we were talking about actually with Jamie, what now, two weeks ago? Um, you need your best players to play at their best. These are the best players right yeah. now. Uh, or in general, these are the best players on the team. Right. And they are now leading the team, which is what we needed the shark. We needed this, them to do to lead the Sharks back to their greatness that we know they can be. Right. So it's good on them. Uh, it's great to see. And we'll see how long they can keep it up, I guess, because yeah. they're going to be streaky. Yeah. But it's good. It would be nice to see a little bit more of the secondary scoring kind of coming into play here. Uh, maybe that happens once those guys start to struggle yeah. in another week or two. Well, and I think you still got the secondary scoring, uh, but they're just not point per game. Right. Because they're secondary scoring, yeah. right? One name that's missing off that list that's a, a big name on the team is Brent Burns. But Burnsy has five points, five points yeah. in six games. So he didn't make the cut, but by a point, right? So he's still producing as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, really great to see the big names on the team stepping up and taking the reins over this uh, six game win streak. What did Jamie Baker say? Your best players have to be your best players. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the keys that we didn't have. <laughs> and he said, I would replace this with that. And it was yeah. basically, but your best players have to be your best players. Well, uh, you know, the team is playing good defensively. That was one of our keys as well. And their best players, best players are being their best players right now. So, um, and, and the goaltending is, I think, in my my mind, is, it's pretty solid right now. It's good enough to win. It's good enough to win. So, uh, yeah, I mean, everything's coming together really nicely. We hope that it continues, and I guess we'll just jump right into the week ahead. Or? Let's do it. Okay, so we got the week ahead, and this is where we're hoping that it does continue because huh. we jump in right away Tuesday. A rematch with Edmonton. Oh, boy. At least it's at home. We're not going into Edmonton. That's true, yeah. So it's... You know, I almost would rather go into Edmonton to see the difference. Yeah. If there would be a difference, because you don't get last change. But um, it'll be it'll be good to see how Edmonton bounces back because it's going to be fresh in their minds mm -hmm. of how the Sharks played against them. It'll be good to see how well the Sharks respond after their game against Detroit because they did not play their best uh, against Detroit. They also didn't play their best against Anaheim the the game before that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can pick things up and and get things back on the winning track. Um, I'm expecting another win out of here. Okay. I just think the Sharks kind of have Edmonton num Edmonton's number in a way. They just know how to shut down that top line and once you shut that top line down they're done. They have nothing else. Yeah, the dominoes begin to fall once uh, once you've eliminated McDavid and Dreisaitl, So And we talked about this in the live. Uh, there was actually a question about it, how Joe Thornton looked and I thought in yeah. this game specifically, or the game last week uh, against Edmonton, Edmonton does not have a third and fourth line that can compete with the Sharks. So they were looking very dominant and fresh and good, uh, which they're going to exploit any team that is kind of built like that. Right. So I think Edmonton is kind of playing at their peak, and the Sharks are still trending upward to get there. Right, they're on the trajectory up, yeah, mm -hmm. which is nice. And we're going to need that when we go into Vegas on Thursday, play against those yep. jokers. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> That's going to be a tough game. Uh, yeah. Vegas actually won tonight. They beat Calgary 6-0. I feel like that's kind of a statement game because they were on a five-game losing streak, I, I believe. It was either four or five, I thought, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were not doing so well, and it was great to see. <laughs> so they actually jumped now in the standings. I mean, the standings don't really matter. What I really care about is the point differential between like the top and the bottom, sure. so how much space you can move up and down. And right now, everything is so tight that There's Vegas no was yeah <laughs> Vegas was below the Sharks as of this morning, mm -hmm. and now and they were in seventh out of eighth in the Pacific, and they jumped all the way to fourth now with that win today. Right. So and they jumped over Calgary right. and the Sharks. So it's just it's interesting to see everything move. Like it, again, it's not that it's more about how much difference there is, how much ground yeah. to be made up. And right now, the Sharks have made up a lot where they're right there in everything. Yeah, and, and I don't bother looking really at the standings right now anyway. But um, you know, you, you see people saying their Sharks are second from the bottom in the Pacific. It's like yeah, but like a win or two when they yeah. shoot straight up the standings. So again. Save your judgment for Thanksgiving ish, you know. Uh, maybe even a little bit past that for when your your first real good window of you know what the pace might actually be, what mm -hmm. they're uh, where they're trending, where that might actually be, right? Uh, any of the models that people have, the projection models, take those with a grain of salt because it's not at this stage of the season, it's still not accurate, right? Yeah. So. Anyway, yeah. uh, after the game uh, in Vegas, we come back to San Jose and we play. The Islanders. The Islanders, which is a weird one. It's going to be tough because yeah. that's uh, was it Barry Trotz mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's there now. He's a very defensive-minded coach. Uh, they get a lot of very boring games. Their guys don't score a lot of goals, but they really don't give up much. 
So it's going to be a tough game. Uh, what will be good for the Sharks to do is score early because that'll open up the game. If they get scored on and the Islanders have clamp a lead, down. they're going to clamp it down and it's going to be really hard to get in through there. And it would be interesting if they, I bet they start uh, Thomas Grice, uh, former Sharks yeah. goalie, who is doing pretty well there. But they kind of have a 1A, 1B situation. So I think it's him and Varlamov this year. Um, last year it was uh, Leonard mm. and Grice. So um, I bet they go with Grice just because he's somewhat familiar with the Sharks, even though it's been a while. Um, but the Islanders will be on a West Coast tour. Mm -hmm. I think it's tougher for those East Coast teams coming West than it is for the West Coast teams going East. Very good. Uh, question about the goaltending now. Mm -hmm. So we've seen Martin Jones play six straight, right? Um, there was a comment made, if you can't trust Aaron Dell against a team like Detroit, when can you trust him? Um, so there's some kind of controversy going on about, you know, Aaron Dell as a backup and uh, whether somebody else should be brought in or brought up or whatever the case may be. My question then would be for these next three games, I personally, Aaron Dell gets a start somewhere in here, I think, right? So the question is where? Do you think it's against Edmonton, Vegas, Islanders? Whew. Um, of all those three teams, I, I would say definitely not in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not the Edmonton game. Maybe it's the Islanders game. Yeah. Just Out because of... it'll be the end of the week. Uh, and actually, next week, he's going to get a game next week. Because the week after this upcoming back one, back. there's four games okay. in five nights or something, or six nights. Okay. So he, he's definitely going to get a game in there. So I think they would want to get him game this week to get him back up to speed right? because he's been out for a while now. So you think they play him outside of the division against the Islanders then? I just, yeah, I don't know. It's either, yeah, I, it's definitely not the Vegas game. Okay. So I'd say either Tuesday or Saturday. Okay, fair enough. So that's it for the Week in Review. We're going to go ahead and jump into a couple things, the last two things that we do. So uh, EASHL, I, I'm actually going to say we're not going to do this week. We're going to skip uh, EASHL. We're going to do it probably every other week um, just because uh, it's kind of a, a bit of a pain to get the screenshots going. <laughs> and uh, because the clips, um, they're a little bit fewer and farther between. I think I might have a couple, uh, but we'll do that maybe next week instead. So uh, for this week, EASHL, uh, not uh, happening, not a thing. I do want to say one quick shout out though to uh, Nick. Nick HBK150, I think is the handle. <laughs> so uh, he's been killing it uh, with us on the PS4. We do appreciate you uh, jumping in there and, and uh, playing real well for us. Uh, it's, I've been getting a lot of bags. I'm very happy nice. with the amount of bags that I have for, for club. Uh, getting lots of fun goodies and stuff. So, again, thank you for that. Fire <laughs> away. Uh, fantasy hockey update. I have moved up finally into oh first place in League One. <laughs> it was a long and hard fought okay. uh, week. But I got up there. Uh, I got some help. I think some of the, some of the other teams that were below me uh, lost or ahead of me. Okay. Um, and then looking at the other league, I am still in first. Still okay. at the top and just dominating. Um, I am actually going to have some trouble because one team I have, Crosby and Klingberg, out, and they're on IR for okay. a while. Uh, and the other team I have, um, uh, who do I have? Somebody else that's out, one of my goalies. I can't remember who. I'm mixing up. This is the problem why I have too many teams. I, I mix <laughs> up who is on what team and, and whatever. But anyway, I was dealing with three different injuries, and okay. it was tough because they're, they're not guys that I could drop, and there's only two IR spots on your team. To store them at so okay. and it took a while too because they don't put them on IR in fantasy hockey until real life they put them on IR and like Sidney Crosby was day to day for like over a week or two so it took a while to put yeah. them there it's a pain in the butt <laughs> so anyway I'm in first in both leagues it's fantastic even though it's still a little early it's still good to be at the top nice yeah Oakley Dokley. Well, um, I think that'll be the end of episode number 65 right there. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We do uh, hope that you will visit our store and uh, pick up some merch. Again, we got the shirts, uh, gray, teal, black, black women's deep V cut. We got the hats and we got the stickers. Uh, everything that you purchase uh, helps us out with running the show. So if you do enjoy it and uh, you don't want to just do the super chat during the lives, which we appreciate that as well. If you want to get something for your, uh, your donation, please go ahead and visit the store because that will help us out greatly. And we're still running our promo of Patty for free shipping. So be sure to use that code. However, we will be ending that promotion fairly soon. Yes. Yes? And next week. Okay. Do we want to say the other thing? Sure. Okay. We're, we're going to have a Black Friday sale as well. Yes? So keep an eye out for that one as well. But um, either way, we're going to go ahead and ask that you uh, check out the store. 
because there's lots of cool stuff in there. Yep. Very good. Okay, uh, we're done here. We're done. Very good. Okay, guys, thanks again for tuning in. We appreciate it. And uh, Super Geek of Joe's not here. But for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.